Hello, let us look at To Kill a Mockingbird chapter 26 and this chapter is basically back to school and some of the issues that Scout has in coming to terms with everything that has been happening. Okay. So, first of all, we're at the Radley Place. Scout goes by the Radley Place every day now and she says she does not fear the place. Um, she used to be afraid of it and not so much anymore. It's just a sad rundown building, right? They see Nathan every now and then going to and from the store and Boo has never come out, but they know he's in there for the same old reason that he's never been, he's never been drug out before, right? He hasn't died, so they know he's in there. Um, she calls Arthur Radley a reasonable recluse. Okay, so she's starting to see reason. It's as if if he wants to stay in there, he can stay in there. That's what recluses do. So he's pretty reasonable with wanting to stay in his house. This is kind of growth in how she's seeing the world. But she's going to destroy that in just a moment. Um, she starts remembering the gifts, the Indian head pennies, the string, the watch, the knife. And she looks at the knot hole and it's starting to yellow. It's been a couple years now. And that connection with whoever was leaving those gifts, probably Arthur Radley, is gone. So that makes her a little sad as well. And she's daydreaming about seeing him. What is she going to say to him? Good day to you, or howdy do, Mr. Arthur. Right fine weather we're having. And she's just daydreaming this very fun conversation, but it's not real. Okay. And she knows it's not real, but it's just daydreaming. What would happen if she sees him? And she even mentions it to Atticus and Atticus is like, what this story again, leave him alone kind of thing. Um, and she makes up her mind and says that Boo can do what he wants. And this is where she kind of destroys her growing up mind a bit and figures, well, he probably does go out and he goes out at night when the moon is full and he goes and stares at Mrs. Crawford or Miss Stephanie Crawford. This is back to the old stories and make-believe fantasies they had of him. And she just goes right back to it and says, well, I wouldn't stare at Mrs. Miss Stephanie Crawford, but if that's what Boo wants to do, that's what he wants to do. So she's still got a lot of room to grow. So we're at school. She is now in the third grade and we see a class divide. We have the rural kids that live out in the woods versus the town students who walk to school. The rural kids bus to school. And there is a difference in the way they talk, right? They see this, sing the same songs, but the way they pronounce the words donkey instead of donkey. Um, it's really kind of interesting. And believe it or not, we see this element here at T-Town as well. There's a certain bad grammar that many students pick up. Um, and if we're from the area, it's hard to see it, but as an outsider, it's easily discernible. And we see this class divide. And we see this during current events when the teacher, Mrs. Gates, wants the students to bring in a newspaper. Well, the rural kids, all they have is the grit, right? This, yeah, I don't know what to call it. It's just a paper that is not very respectable, if you will. But the regular town students can bring in a real paper. Um, Cecil Jacobs comes in and talks about Hitler for current events. And he keeps getting corrected by the teacher. Um, he's like, old Hitler shouldn't. And the teacher would correct him. It's like, no, we don't say old anybody. It's Adolf Hitler. Oh, old Adolf Hitler. It's kind of funny. She's trying to teach him, but it doesn't stick. Um, so they're talking about Hitler and how he's rounding up the Jewish people and putting them to camps. And Cecil gets the article all wrong. You know from history what happened, and you can kind of piece it together. Um, they get into a discussion of government. What is democracy? Um, what's the role of government and stuff like that. And this is a pretty deep 
lesson for third graders. And I don't think any of them got it. Um, Scout gives a definition of democracy. She says it is equal rights for all, special privileges for none. Now, nowhere did the teacher explain what that meant, right? Um, but she remembered it, Scout remembered it from a campaign slogan. And the teacher just kind of drives on with this third grade class. And we talk about persecuting the Jews. And a student mentioned, well, why are they being persecuted? They're white, aren't they? And this is almost a gut punch. This student in third grade mentioning this and implying that it's okay to persecute people who are not white. That's how deep this racism goes. Um, it's okay to persecute people if they're not white which is craziness. But yet here it is right there in society and the teachers talk about how it's terrible to persecute Jews. We should never persecute anybody. And yet we find out later, Miss Gates was one who was really adamant after the Tom Robinson trial and being very racist. And Scout heard this. We'll get into it again in a bit. Scout's talking to Atticus to try to figure out some things. And Scout was asking about Arthur Radley. And Atticus was like, no, no more of this. And he says, I don't want you around that place. You might get shot. Atticus knew about the kids sneaking in, knew that Nathan Radley was shooting at them in the air. And he never told anybody, never told Jem, who was never wanted Atticus to find out, but Atticus knows. And Atticus kind of kept that to himself. And this just shut Scout up. It was end of conversation. She didn't talk about it anymore practically. Um, they're talking about how things are going to settle down after the trial. But things aren't really settling down too much. Uh, the parents in the community are discussing these things with the trial with the kids. And they're singling out Jim and Scout as if poor kids. They don't have any say in it. They're just children of Atticus and they can't do anything about it. And the other kids are just leaving them alone and Scout's like, this is something that would be great to solve with a fist fight, but we have to hold our head high and know that others are kind of condescending to us. Scout doesn't understand how that works. She just knows it's not right. Um... But in this, people disapprove of Atticus, and that's where what we're getting here. And Scout sees that, and you know, it's her father. It's hard to see that people disapprove of people that you love. And it's interesting. They disapprove of Atticus, yet they re-elect him to state legislature, and he represents them at the state level. So they don't like what he does, they talk about it, they complain about it, and yet no one even goes up against him to go work for the legislature. Um, and Scout just sums it up toward the end after this little reminiscing is just people were just peculiar. People are weird, right? All these crazy internal contradictions and they disapprove of Atticus, yet they want him to be their spokesperson. So she's talking more with Atticus, trying to figure out something. Scout doesn't understand why Hitler's in power. Here he is taking millions of people, sending them to concentration camps. You'd think that everybody would get together and throw him in the concentration camp, which is a great question. That's not how government was to work, right? People in power tell the people below what to do, and the people below do it. Um, Miss Gates goes on about Hitler and Atticus, well, as she would, knowing that Hitler is not a good person. We get in the whole subject. Is it okay to hate Hitler? No, it is most certainly not okay to hate anyone, which, you know, is kind of another contradiction that Scout is trying to deal with here. Um, so she decides not to talk anymore with Atticus and goes to Jem. And Jem is busy stuffing, right? He's trying to bulk up to gain 25 pounds for next year. That's a lot of weight, right? Going from 7th to 8th grade, 25 pounds. He wants to play on football. Right now he's just 
the water boy, right? He carries the water buckets around and he does it very enthusiastically. He's a part of the team. Um, and Scout asked Jem about Miss Gates' racism. Right? She said some terrible things after the trial. Jem didn't hear it. He was all tears and just couldn't handle anything then. But Scout heard it. And wanted to know how she can talk like this about the African Americans in the community and yet have a totally different slant on things when a different race of people are getting persecuted somewhere else. How can you be like that at home when this is going on elsewhere and it's really confuses Scout and Jem flies off the handle, right? Shut up. I never want to hear about this again. Don't say it. And he just loses it. Scout goes back out to Atticus. Atticus heard everything and just tells her that Jem's trying to figure things out, right? This trial has totally devastated Jem. He's got to put some time behind it. And Atticus says when he puts this time behind it and when he figures it out, he will be himself again. I wonder how long this will take. Have a great day.